not only a good sustainable business as far as, a, as the, the environment, it's good economics, it's sustainability. Knowing predictably what the price would be regardless of the part, price of coal is a great opportunity for us to actually fix our business model for a long period of time. Okay, question, yep. Hello, oh, look, my name is Peter Cohen. I'm an electrical engineer with my own business. I actually came here by electric tram to have taken a car here from my place and looked for a parking spot would have been sheer stupidity. Uh, but uh, I can think there's a lot of practical, I'm a sort of a, a very much nuts and bolts engineer, I can think of lots of practical difficulty which I'm sure you'll overcome such as I park my car in the street, I can't very well run a power lead across the footpath. You've got to speak closer, I've got to hear oh. Did you miss all the rest? No, I, no, I just, <laughs> just ask a question, please. You're an electric <laughs> engineer, you, you take a train yeah. and you as have a, a lot of practical As a nuts questions. and bolts engineer, I sort of think of all sorts of practical difficulties which can be resolved. But for example, I drive my, I park my car on the street. I wouldn't be, I couldn't run a power lead across the, across the footpath. Council wouldn't allow it. I'd have to have a special plug alongside. It's a rented place if I leave. Someone doesn't need that lead. There, you can think of in uh, shopping centres, someone, uh, you run a certain number of parking spots with power leads, mm -hmm. with power points, but uh, you know, for, in an intermediate stage, someone drives with their electric car and you've got a whole lot of petrol cars taking up all the leads. There, all these little difficulties, batteries. Uh, can you ask the question, please, so we okay. can get the answer? So I'm wondering what strategies you have sort of in mind for uh, solving these bits, you're, thousands of problems. You're, you're absolutely right. We, we solve a thousand small problems every three months. We, we, we reintegrated the entire solution, not just hardware and software, but tools, policies, everything else that we learn every three to four months, what we call a prism. We're now on, on the fourth or fifth prism. And we find out a lot of these small questions, right? Each one of them seems small, but I'll give you one that most people won't, won't understand. Um, how many spots do you connect into the car? How many charge spots are on the car and where should they be located? It doesn't sound like something big to solve, but it ends up that if you don't have two spots and they're both in the front right and the front left, you need twice as much cost to install the network. Take it as homework. Um, the, the, the general sense is that every one of these questions is, is huge. Now, what do we find out? There are different policies. Some cities actually come up and say, you know what, we will allocate 10% of our parking spots, much like we do for handicap parking, to electric cars. We'll, park, we'll paint them blue, we'll do whatever it takes. We'll put it there so that people actually know that they have a parking spot if they want to come. We'll do it in public parking, we'll do it on street parking. If they say so, we actually come in and we install. If they don't, we say, okay, in this city, we will only take customers who have a parking garage. And remember, we can't take 100% of the drivers on day one. Eventually, what will happen, and that usually happens after about 3 or 4% adoption in the country, we go out and we install every single parking spot, every roadside park, every single parking spot will be electric. In some places, it's part of the urban planning. Vancouver announced this week that you are no longer allowed to build a single apartment, not a single building, not a single new parking lot, without every single spot being electric. Why? Because they decided to. It's policy. The, the Chinese decide policies like that. I mean, for example, they decided you can't get into any urban center, Beijing, Shanghai, um, with your gasoline car every day, with a petrol car every day. You've got to choose a day in a week, one of the five work days, in which you're not allowed to bring that car in. By 2012, it'll be three days. By 2014, it'll be disallowed. And at that point, you can pick a, an electric car or a bike. It's your choice. I mean, those are the kind of policies, and you can be very aggressive or very light. Now. We, we go through every one of these problems, the size of the battery, the fix, the, the, the motor. If you sat with us during one of our R&D meetings, you'll see that every meeting has three or four of these decisions. We go through them, we solve them. What's that? It's in Israel. <laughs> okay, look, I'm sorry we can't take further questions. We've just run out of time. Uh, I'd like to invite uh, Professor Chris Ryan to say a, a few words of thanks to our, to our speaker, Shai Gathi. Well, obviously, I want to thank Shai very much for his opening um, and, and such a spectacular opening for this series. I think, as I said at the beginning, as the series goes on, you'll see some an echo of some of these issues. Shai talks about cars um, not being uh, a, a commodity you buy, but buying kilometers, a very much a service approach 
too, he talks about what happens when you plug in batteries to a system and the system stops being a centralised, long, linear distribution system and you end up with a distributed system which is much more resilient in the times of failure. I think also what I gained from, from the Better Place example and from listening to him again today is that it is possible, it is very possible to think of other ways in which the world can be constructed um, which are much more sustainable and, and which can be without many of the problems we face today. Sometimes we find ourselves in a sense locked in um, by the enormous investment that we've had over the last 150 years or so of development with fossil fuels and change can just seem so difficult. It is fantastic, I think, when we hear from projections of another way in which the system can operate because it begins to open up the possibilities of innovation. And throughout these series, I hope that you'll, uh, you'll hear other examples of that.